Hello. Today we're going to have a look at this uh, 1970s Lucas ACR alternator. It's off one of my new fields and it, it failed in the summer and I was going to send it in to be repaired which is why I've put my phone number and name on it but and I thought let's let's make a video of it. Now first of all the bearings in the alternator are still quite serviceable if I give it a spin it's silent so we can just set about repairing it. And I've been on eBay and for about 16 quid I bought this alternator repair kit. Let's have a little look at what we get for our money. Instructions, slip ring, brushes, rectifier and the regulator. All the new parts we need to rebuild this alternator and it's not difficult so let's have a look. First of all we need a quarter socket to remove the cover. There's the cover off. Then there's um, the regulator held by this screw on top. And it's got a wire under this brush box screw this side. And this wire under there. Now what I recommend before you start taking this to bits is that you take a picture of the back of the alternator so that you know all, where all the wires go when you put it back together. There's the regulator off. One more screw. And there's the brush box off. And usually you find that one of these is completely worn out but that's not the case in this so it must be the uh, rectifier or the regulator that's packed up but we've got all the bits to replace it and then the last bit to remove is the rectifier but we're going to need a soldering iron for that and it takes a while so uh, I'm going to start with the soldering iron and then once we once we can find the screws we'll be able to flick the wire off We'll stop filming while I get it off completely. But you just apply a bit of heat like that. And there's the first wire off. We'll start filming again when I've got the rest off. Now I've removed the three wires, it's just a matter of undoing the nut on the end, which you've already loosened with a screwdriver, with a spanner, sorry and lifting the rectifier pack out. And on the back of the rectifier pack is this little rubber mount. You need to take that off and that goes on the new one. And then that just drops back in there. But before I put that in, I'll just show you this, the, the slip ring. This is in very good order, so I'm not going to make work renewing it. But to replace them, if you just look down here, you can see there's a wire soldered on and 180 degrees round the other side there's another one just flick the two wires out and that just prizes off and then the new one just pushes on and you resolder it but I'm going to leave that because that's okay so now the rectifier that drops in there like that and then we get a spanner and tighten her up Make sure she's vertical, that's nice and tight. And then we put the wires back on. That one down there, and just bend this up out of the way so that it doesn't come off again. And the next one. And the last one this side. And then you get the soldering iron and some solder. And uh... Okay, we've now soldered the rectifier back into place. But before we've hit the brush box, we'll just check the continuity of the stator. So I've got an ohm meter here. I've switched it on. 
and if you just touch the terminals together zero resistance and we'll just test this here oh and it's fell off well done start again yeah there's nothing wrong with that so we can carry on putting it back together right now I've refitted the re rectifier we'll put all the rest of the parts on if I can remember how they go let's have a start first of all the brush box goes on there I'll put a screw in to hold it then drop the regulator on its legs go in them slots there you go, suaded it in I'll put that on next because the other screw also holds the earth wire for the regulator and then the coarse self tapper into the plastic actually holds the rectifier the regulator to the brush box now refit the brushes and these are tricky little things persuade these to go in that one goes in there you have to Persuade the spring to go in, the hole after it. There you go. Get one of these tiny little screws in the hole and tighten it down. made my first mistake already because this strap goes in here Now I can put a second screw in. They do take a bit of persuading, but eventually they go in. Now the other brush. This one for some reason has a long tag on one end. I think it's uh, where the connector suppressor or an anti-surge diode or something if, you, if that's an option on your alternator. There you go, got that home. And the screw. And then the last screw has both the orange and the yellow wire underneath it. And that goes into there. And that's all that back together. Now, if I can get it right, I'll explain to you how it uh, all works. The two large terminals connect to the battery and take the current to the battery when it starts generating. The small terminal, or the warning lamp terminal, the wire connected to that has a small current 
from the warning lamp, which is why if the bulb's blown on the warning lamp, these don't charge. This current is passed down the orange wire and goes through the brushes, out the other side, through this link to the regulator, and the regulator via this wire earths it out, so it causes magnetism in the rotating field and it generates. As it starts generating and the voltage here rises to 14 volts, the orange wire, now carrying a full 14 volts, passes the voltage to the yellow wire, which goes into the regulator, tells the regulator, batteries up to 14 volts, stop passing current down the earth wire to short out the rotating windings. So the magnetic field collapses and it stops generating. And that's basically how these work. So now the last part, I'll put the lid on. I hope I can persuade it to fit, get it in the right place. You do take a bit of persuading. There you go, that's tight. That's all ready to go back on the tractor now with all new parts in it and I'll keep your lights nice and bright and the starter starting and the battery charged up. So there you go, one reconditioned alternator. Happy tractoring everybody.